all righty. Thank you so much for opening this video with some random, strange-looking stranger uh, that you have never heard of before. <laughs> this is technically the first upload to Radio Nowhere, um, which my wife and I have decided to start um, both as a result of recently kind of moving into this lovely van that you're probably going to see a lot of, and, well, moving around the country and especially with the election that happened last night, November 5th, 2024, if somehow this video is still being viewed by people, you know, more than tomorrow. Anyway, my name is Cersei, my wife's name is Naomi, you'll be hearing from both of us. In this case, with, you know, the looming second Trump administration coming at all of us, trans, queer, people of color, disabled, intersex folks, basically everyone that is not personally part of his demographic and also rich, um, I feel like this had to be made. I felt like I needed to be a weird looking trans person in front of a camera with no makeup on to tell you a little bit about how I intend to survive the next four years. So I'm also going to be doing my makeup because it's fun and it's possible there are some of you who really would prefer to be able to present more femininely or whatever and aren't really sure where to start. I feel like there are a lot of kind of standard trans girl makeup tutorials, but they're all done by gorgeous people who have no flaws to cover up. So that's why my ugly face is in front of you right now. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I do to get presentable. But importantly, I want to make this a part of what I am calling the poison dart frog strategy. Um, I for a little bit of context, came out as a trans woman back in the, towards the end of 2017, started really presenting full-time at my job and everywhere else around 2018. Um, there was a lot going on. I'm currently 37. Life has been a whole damn thing. But what you should know is that I have not done this forever. I have been on hormones for about seven years at this point now, um, and I've been Similarly, similarly presenting uh, Femme since 2017, but I don't pass. <laughs> I never will. I'm always going to be a weird looking gender creature. And that's before you see that half my head is shaved, you know? Um, and I feel like that's a lot of us. A lot of us are just seeing every day the most beautiful trans women we've ever met who have everything that they ever need to just look flawless and perfect and be perfect. And none of us are. <laughs> I, I don't go through this, I don't tell you this to say, you are going to be stealth, you are going to pass completely, and no one is ever going to bother you. In fact, that is kind of the opposite of what I'm saying. I am saying, right now, there is nothing we can do more important than supporting each other, and making sure we are visible to all of the chuds that just voted for the guy who would like us dead. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'll briefly explain some of the makeup products that I'm using. Obviously, I'm not tied to any specific brands, with one exception. But ELF and NYX are generally where I go, just for cost-effectiveness compared to their relative stuff. Awesome. Alright, so, step one. I like starting with a primer. Like I said, uh, this is an ELF primer. There are a million different versions. Um, honestly, I haven't seen a ton of difference between any of them. Um, and you can tell this one is brand new because I have to literally struggle to like pull the plastic off of it. Um, what this does, though, and why this is important, is that especially if you are really active or otherwise outside for long periods of time, you're going to be out for a whole night or something like that, um, you don't want to sweat off your makeup, you don't want it to run, you don't want to have any issues with it. Primer is how you fix that. So, this could easily be applied with a brush, if you like. I'm a big fan of these kind of like big kind of general purpose brushes. They'll call them eyeshadow, but like literally it goes all over your face. It's a brush. Um... <laughs> Also, uh, my wife prefers these little rounds of cotton. These are super handy for this as well. Anything you really want kind of smooth, even uh, coverage with, either way, absolutely a good way to go. I'm going to do the brush method because that's where my muscle memory's at. But poison dart frogs 
that's really what I want to talk to you about. Um, you've probably heard of them. They're not exactly a novel concept. But the poison dart frog is really interesting because it's, uh, on one level, pretty much entirely harmless. If you want to eat frogs, you know, if you're just a frog eating sort, uh, the poison dart frog has nothing that can directly stop you from eating it. It has no teeth. It has no claws. It has no spikes. But it's, and yet, despite having no obvious defenses, it's very bright. You look them up. They have crazy patterns, you know? Lots of interesting colors. You see where I'm going with this? This is all a metaphor. So, the poison dart frog is, in fact, immensely poisonous. And I do mean poisonous, not venomous. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not a reptile channel. I'm sure some would. Regardless, if you try to eat a poison dart frog, you are going to regret it. Their, their skin exerts a poison that will immediately take effect upon touching your mouth. Or whatever. Don't eat poison dart frogs. They're not the ones you want to lick the back of either. But, think about this in relation to how trans people are expected to live in a country, in an environment, in a world that often just kind of doesn't want to have us around. <laughs> we, historically, and I mean going back decades, really, since, well, even before medical transition was a thing, the answer was always stealth. You should not be seen. Because if you're not seen, you can't be hunted. Next thing I'm going to do here, this is a little miracle product called Orange Concealer. NYX makes it. A couple other brands make it. It's fairly easy to get a hold of. The reason you want orange, regardless of your skin tone, as you can see, my skin tone is very pasty white, um, orange will nicely counter the dark blues of the dark hairs you can see on my face and neck. So, same as before, I'm just going to use a brush because that's easy for me. Some people like makeup sponges instead. Those are super easy to get a hold of and absolutely a great place to start. They let you very, they let you really customize the surface you're working with. What I will recommend, regardless of what you're using, is that rather than smear it on like paint, you want to dab it. You want to tap it. Stippling, this is called in the painting world. But this gives you maximum coverage with the minimum amount of makeup involved and means at, in the end of things, when you've done this with, you know, all of your products, you are not going to have, you know, a quarter inch thick slab of makeup putty on your face, which is gonna have help it last longer and look a lot more natural if you're not going for, say, a stage look. Stage makeup is a lot thicker. Same for drag performances and the like. It's gonna feel a little different, it's gonna look a little different. Not what I'm showing you today. Regardless, I focus on putting this on all the places that grow hair, which for me is, unfortunately, kind of everywhere. Um, I am also blessed with some extremely dark facial hair, uh, in addition to this lovely baritone. And yet, you know, I go by she, her, sometimes she, they. I do not allow folks to treat me any differently, despite the fact that I clearly have masculine traits, you know? I gotta be me. I gotta be the poison dart frog that I am. Back onto that subject. Next up is going to be just a little bit of concealer. Concealer's great. You probably already know how to use it, truthfully. You kind of just smear it on places you don't want people to see. Um, or things you want to smooth out if you've got blemishes. You can see I have just the darkest eye circles, so that tends to get a little bit of love. Um, in this case, what I would actually recommend, sadly I don't have any right now, is something called Tattoo Cover. It is made by a company called Mayron. It's traditionally a costume makeup, but it is the best thing at covering beard shadows specifically from what I've seen. Now, for most of these, for most traditional liquid concealers, you're going to get a very strange kind of brush for it. But, same deal. Kind of like you would with paint. Start by getting kind of a lot of coverage and straight lines down. And I'll show you why we're doing straight lines here in a moment. There we go. All right. 
Same as before, I'm just hitting everywhere that has hair growing. Let's make sure me is kind of everywhere. <laughs> Regardless, I've made it as an out and proud trans woman for eight years now. You can too. Now, after doing this, and you will notice conceal you should your concealer should be a brighter, a, a, a lighter, a paler skin tone um, than your actual skin tone. And I will show you why momentarily. But same as before, we're just gonna dab and stipple that around. So we don't want any particular place to get a thick coverage, right? You'll also see me purse my lips a lot. It's to keep it off of there. Concealer especially just loves sticking to your lips and it makes you look like a zombie. It's not great. All right. Okay, so we've got fairly, this doesn't look human, right? You've got very bright colors. There's a clear, easy break between natural skin and the concealer. That is okay. Because our next step is some foundation. Like I said before, million varieties of this. Um, I generally, again, ELF and NYX are kind of my way to go. Um, but their full coverage foundations, I find work really well for my skin type. Yours may vary. That is okay. Alrighty. What is this? Ah, yes, okay. Some of them are kind of more conventional squeeze bottles. This one happens to be a pump, which is nice. Same as before. I'm just going to pump that right on the brush. Woo! Got a little bit on my finger. That's okay. So, have a little bit of extra makeup on me. Your fingers work just as well as a brush does, truthfully. They're just a little less consistent. And I like having brushes. They make me feel like I'm doing something intelligent and not just painting my weird monkey face. Anyway, poison dart frogs. <laughs> yes, we're still talking about frogs because I feel like this strategy is a necessity. Just like I felt it was a necessity in 2018 when I decided during the first Trump administration to come out anyway because I, I couldn't do it anymore. The closet was painful. I was tired of being in it. And so, I came out to my coworkers. My friends already knew. They had already seen me on occasion. But it wasn't the same, right? It wasn't the same as going out and living every day with everybody staring and everybody seeing a trans creature and dealing with it. But, I decided, because I couldn't be stealth. I have these features. I have this voice. While I can do vocal training, while absolutely I happen to have enough of a specialty to be able to shift exactly how my voice is perceived in ways that will generally be feminine, I'm never going to completely pass. Anyone who really just wants to see that I'm trans is going to figure out I have an Adam's apple. Is going to figure out, you know, my voice gets a little deep when I'm excited or if I'm not controlling it. Is going to generally look at my features, see, you know, harsh angles in the hairline or whatever. There are a million stupid little tells that trans investigators and other haters are going to focus on, and you're probably going to have a couple of them. But what I want to tell you today is that none of that shit matters, truthfully. Because we are poison dart frogs. We want to be seen. We want to show them that if they want to mess with us, they are going to get all of the poison that is in our skin. <laughs> and that is why and how I have persisted. So... Same deal as before. Foundation's on nice and evenly. And you can see with that concealer, it's even better with that tattoo cover stuff, but even my super dark hair is no longer visible, especially on this terrible camera. Further up, future uploads, we'll have a better camera. We had to get this one out today though. Today is, well, there's no other day quite like today. Next up, we're going to move to lip colors. Lip colors are really interesting. There are, you know, as many products as there are brands, as there are alternatives, liquid lip colors, lip liners, all of it. 
I will tell you, I rarely mess with any of that stuff, truthfully. Um, ELF makes excellent little waxy sticks like these in a number of colors. I tend to prefer dark, darker colors. In this case, I'm going with a dark purple. Let me see what they call this. Scarlet Night. How wonderful. Um, but, simple enough. All you want to do is really pucker your lips out. First draw in the lines that you see there. And then use your lips themselves to actually spread those out. You can do a little bit of back and forth if you need to, but it really doesn't take much. I like these. These absolutely work on their own, obviously, as you can see. Don't be afraid to get the edges. But yeah, these work great on their own. They don't last a ton. They don't last super long. Um, and they're more of a lip tint than, say, a traditional lipstick, which is going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit more opaque. So what I usually will do is once I've done this kind of first wave, I'll come in. This is another ELF color. Um, vampy Violet. Mm. <laughs> this is a more traditional lipstick, so I, but I don't have to use as much now. This essentially is covering the gaps that may be left by this kind of thicker, less spreading material. This is These are usually wax-based. But, quick little thing. It's like chewing with just your lips. Be sure to get those edges, and there you go. There is a lovely dark shade of purple. Traditionally, this would be called a nighttime color, you know? This is the kind of thing you're supposed to go out to the bar with. I kind of goth it up all the time, so all of my colors are like this. But <laughs> you should find what feels right to you. Your coloration is important. And, of course, your poison is the same. <laughs> but that's, that's really the heart of it. The fact of the matter is, you'll never be able to. We'll never be able to hide in a way that's going to satisfy these people. There, the the old idea of stealth is dead. It, at this point, we have trans investigators coming after cis women who have, you know, historically had children or are actively pregnant or whatever. If they have decided to hate on you, they're going to come at you regardless of what you actually look like. So, I say. Look fucking fabulous. That's what all of us should do, right? Next up is some blush. Blush is super simple. Same thing. Just going to get a little bit on the brush. You only really need it on your cheekbones. You can do other places too. Um, some folks will like to do their forehead. Maybe just a little bit on the nose just to give you some variety. This stuff does really tint your brush or sponge or whatever you're using, so be careful. It's a little strong. This is just to give some color back. You'll probably notice with just the foundation, unless you have a lot of kind of natural variation in your skin tone, you're going to look a little bit undead. Um, and that's what blush fixes. Really nice to have. We're nearly done. Can you believe it? Just wiping that off real quick. So, that is what I am proposing for all of us, truth be told. While I'm doing this eyeliner, I'll even keep proposing it. We have to live openly, if you can, obviously. If you're in a situation where you are not safe being you, then you should not do that. Because the most important thing is that you live. If you grip the outer edge of the eyelid here, and you can just kind of smear those little dots I just did, that will give you kind of a smooth, smoky eye right off the bat. Same thing here. Stretch it tight, and you're going to put dots right on the very bottom, just the whole way across. This is the black eyeliner. Uh, browns are often used for more quote-unquote natural makeup looks, but I do prefer black for what it does for my eyes personally. Another quick thing you can do while you have your eyebrow, while you're while you have your eyeliner out, 
Put a couple dots up in your eyelids, up in your eyebrows. As you can see, I have tiny little baby eyebrows. You probably have real ones. Um, spread that in. And they stick out a bit better. They look a bit more full, you know, especially if you have patchy eyebrows, you have cuts, anything like that. It's a great way to seal them up without going all the way, taking them off and drawing new ones on. Also totally legit, just way more work than I want to do. Um, we're nearly done. We've got two other steps here I don't usually take, but I'm going to take them today because I love all of you, everyone. And I want all of you, especially my trans brothers and sisters, especially other folks in the queer community. I want us all to be able to come together and love each other and understand a little bit and be a use, you know, to looking at each other, even though we're not what we're used to seeing every day. So that's really what I'm getting at here. The poison dark frog strategy is to show our enemies that we are poisonous and dangerous and will fight back if they come at us. And it lets our allies know that we are here, that we are not going anywhere. That, ultimately, we will survive this. We will find some way to come together and move forward regardless of who is in charge. So, that all said, I'm going to finish this up real quick. There's really not much. I'm going back to the blush. What are you doing? What are you going back to the blush for? The, the other trick that a lot of makeup folks are not going to tell you is that anything can kind of work as anything. This is blush, but if I want a little bit of red on my eyes, a natural look covers just the eyelid that you've got spread here. If you want more, go for more. I personally usually kind of cover the whole eye socket just because I have really deep eyes and it looks good. But, hmm, let me get a little more. And you know, as I've said, I'm not afraid of people seeing me. I can't be. We can't be anymore. Stealth is no longer an option. So if you're safe, I hope, I hope you take this as a message to present the way that you want to present, to let people see the person that you want to be, because it's the least you deserve. One final, well, next to last step. I almost never do this, but just for you all, I'm going to do a bit of mascara. Mascara is awful. To be honest with you, it's a huge pain in the ass. What I will generally do is just kind of lightly lick my eyelashes from bottom to top here, and I really don't need much. My eye, my lashes are thankfully pretty full. If yours aren't, you may need to use more. You don't, you really want to use the minimum amount you can because this stuff loves to clump up or otherwise mess with you. Blink a few times afterwards. That just ensures that it gets on all your eyelashes and isn't going to stay on just one. This also dries up fairly easily. So if you find that it's not, that it's real goopy and it's not going on quite right, you probably have bad mascara. Last step. This is a bit of an old school one. Um, I, there are more modern kind of sealants that you can use. I like old fashioned powder, um, mostly because I got my start in theater and that's kind of what I'm used to, but it's messy. So, what I generally will recommend for this. Same brush you've used before. There we go. Just kind of get that in the hand. This particular one gives a lot of powder at once. So you got to be kind of careful. You don't want to get it on your clothes. Especially if you're like me and you wear black all the time. It will happily just stain your clothes forever. So I will usually kind of stand with my face down and dab it on, or the opposite. You can go up and do that as well. This just sets everything that you've done so that it is less likely to melt or otherwise decay over the day or for however long you're out or whatever you're doing and hit everything. I mean, you don't exactly want to hit your eyelashes. You probably won't anyway. Um, but the lips, eyes, kind of everything else. And this is where you can start kind of cleaning in any areas that need it. But there you go. Very basic makeup tutorial and a very basic explanation of how I think and how we 
are going to live for the next forever. Because how else can we even get by, right? And what is the point of being alive if you can't be yourself? This was Cersei from uh, Radio Nowhere. Thank you so much. I hope that you will tune in to further updates from us as we travel around the U.S. and try to figure out what it means to live as a trans person in the modern world. I love you. Have a great day.